Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the University of North Carolina at Asheville. You may be seated. I'm Pat Smith, Chair of the UNC Asheville Board of Trustees. It is an honor and a great personal privilege to welcome you to the installation of Dr. Mary K. Grant as the seventh chancellor of this outstanding institution. I now have the distinct honor of introducing my friend, former Foundation colleague, and a wonderful Western North Carolinian who has spent his life serving our great state, Thomas W. Ross, President of the University of North Carolina. Tom will preside over today's ceremony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pat. Uh, it is a great personal pleasure uh, to preside over the installation of Mary Grant as UNC Asheville's seventh chancellor. Today's ceremony is a time for reflection celebration, and anticipation. We have gathered as a university family to celebrate the University of North Carolina at Asheville's proud history and acknowledge the vital and growing pro role it plays in this region and statewide. We celebrate with Chancellor Grant and with the larger UNC Asheville community the new beginning signaled by this ceremony. In Mary Grant, you have gained a leader who personifies what UNC Asheville is all about. She stands firmly for academic excellence and student success. She is absolutely passionate about the enduring value of the liberal arts and in improving lives and communities through higher education. And after just nine months in the role, she has already demonstrated the creativity, the commitment, and yes, the boundless energy that will be required to be an outstanding chancellor and advocate for this institution and the people it serves. We have the right person to lead this great university at this time. Now, if you would, please stand and remain standing as Jerry Wolf, beloved man of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians, provides this morning's invocation. Following the invocation, the community choir, under the direction of Melody Galloway, chair of the UNC Asheville Department of Music, will lead us as we sing America the Beautiful. Beloved man, Jerry Wolf. Good morning again. It's good to be here. I'm uh, delighted that I was invited from Cherokee to come over and do the opening prayer. And uh, I always like to take a moment of silence for our uh, armed forces, our protector here on earth, uh, and uh, also many officials along the highway as we travel. Uh, may we arrive home safely. And may we bow for a moment of silence. O gi da our Father, kalan ati who art in heaven, kalan go ti yu ge sas ti, that's it on hai, how will be thy name? 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Go eager, skiasi, ogalistayati. Give us this day our daily bread. Deskias one ho, deski two gai. Naskia, tsundi ogaji neho, tsoji two gi. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Sagu you yet no, for thine is the kingdom. Allah shall negate you and power Allah is the Lord you and glory. Ego hita, ego hita. And I say, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we'll continue with a song, an uh, old song that we sang in our churches and throughout the country. <clears throat> We will all say, Ego Guia Hontna. I say, No, we would not say, You know, do let us.
Thank you, Mr. Wolf, for your meaningful prayer. You may be seated. For your meaningful prayer and beautiful song. Thank you, Dr. Galloway, and thanks to all of you who have joined us today to share your gift of music. It is truly beautiful. The community choir brings together the Asheville Choral Society, the Reuter Center Singers, as well as students from Asheville High School, T.C. Robertson High School, and representatives from the UNC Asheville faculty, staff, and students. Thank you. Before I continue, I want to recognize a few very special guests. We are so delighted that members of Chancellor Grant's family are here to share this special day with her. And I want to recognize her husband, Jim Canavan, her sister-in-law, Pat Canavan, her brother, Walter Grant, her sister-in-law, Kathy Grant, her brother, Ed Grant, her nieces, Mackenzie, Maddie, and Sarah Grant, her sister, Christy Grant Slattery, her sister, Susan Junta, her brother-in-law, John Junta. Will you please stand so that we can give you a hearty welcome to UNC Asheville. And there are other good friends of Mary's who have traveled from far and wide to be with her today. And I would also ask you to stand and be recognized. I also want to welcome our honored guest, Mr. James Ferguson II. Mr. Ferguson was the founder and first president of the Asheville Student Committee on Racial Equality. In the 1960s, following the example of Martin Luther King Jr. and Mahatma Gandhi, the group used nonviolent protest and civil disobedience to desegregate the public facilities of the city of Asheville, including parks, swimming pools, lunch counters, libraries, and the public school system. Mr. Ferguson, the people of this city and this institution owe you a great debt. Thank you, and thank you for being with us today. Please stand and be recognized. Five former UNC Asheville chancellors are also represented here today. John Highsmith is here on behalf of his late father, Chancellor Emeritus William Highsmith. Chancellor Emeritus David Brown is with us today. Chancellor Nancy Schumann is here on behalf of her late husband, Chancellor Emeritus Samuel Schumann. Chancellor Emeritus James Mullen is with us, and Chancellor Emeritus Ann Ponder is here today as well. Thank you all for your extraordinary service to UNC Asheville. Would you please stand and be recognized? In her time at both the Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts and UNC Asheville, 
Chancellor Grant has worked with four board chairs in addition to myself. Former chairs of the MCLA Board of Trustees, Jane Allen, Dick Lamb, and Jean Leibowitz have joined us today. What a testament to their love and admiration for our new chancellor. King Prather, former chair and current vice chair of the UNC Asheville Board of Trustees, is also with us. Would you please stand and be recognized for your deep commitment and service to higher education. Will all current and former members of the UNC Asheville Board of Trustees please stand and be recognized. I also want to recognize the many individuals who volunteer their time and wisdom to UNC Asheville by serving the university as members of the UNC Asheville Foundation Board, the Bulldog Athletic Association, the National Alumni Council, and the National Parents Council. If you currently served or have served on one of these boards, please stand and be recognized. Thank you all. UNC Asheville would not be the institution that it is today without your strong support, devoted service, and guidance. I also welcome all of the delegates who have joined us today representing institutions and organizations from across the state and nation. Thank you for being here to celebrate this momentous day. Will you please stand and be recognized? I also want to welcome UNC Asheville's Provost Joe Ergo and Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, Bill Haggard, who are with us on the platform today. And lastly, but not least, welcome to the faculty, staff, and students of UNC Asheville. You are the very heart of this institution. Now, on behalf of the UNC Asheville Board of Trustees, I'd like to say a few words about Chancellor Mary Grant. I knew from the moment that I met Mary that I was seeing the future of UNC Asheville. She is caring, brilliant, tirelessly energetic, and fiercely devoted to the public liberal arts that stands at the very core of this institution's mission. Over the past nine months, it has been my distinct pleasure to work with her and to witness firsthand her dedication to staff, faculty, and most of all, our students at UNC Asheville. And that dedication already goes well beyond the boundaries of campus and into the community that she now calls home. A strong collaborator in her former role, Mary was intentional about building relationships and partnerships and initiating programs that connected MCLA as an integral part of the Berkshire community, a region very similar to ours with great natural beauty and a strong arts and cultural community. I have been so impressed with her commitment to Asheville and Western North Carolina. 
She has a genuine interest in building relationships with people and institutions and becoming actively engaged. And you will know it's so immediately apparent when you meet her. It's true that UNC Asheville has a strong leader in Mary Grant, but we have a caring leader as well. She's full of energy and excitement about the future of UNC Asheville, the success of our students, and UNC Asheville's role in our community. And I know that she will continue to lead this institution forward in a way that improves the lives of all members of our entire community, not just the faculty, staff, and students who live, work, and study on this campus. Today, we are not only installing UNC Asheville's Chancellor, but we are installing Asheville's Chancellor. And I can tell you, we are in very good hands. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pat. In addition to the individuals that Pat has already recognized, we also have other distinguished guests with us, and I want to take a moment more to recognize them and thank them for being with us. Uh, I ask that they stand and remain standing when introduced, and please hold your applause until all have been recognized. Will members of the North Carolina General Assembly please stand? Will all other governmental officials, federal, state, and local, please stand? Would members of the Board of Governors of the University of North Carolina please stand? And would the chancellors from UNC institutions, who are Mary's colleagues, please stand? Thank all of you for being here with us today. Please join me in a round of applause for these distinguished guests. <clears throat> now I would ask that the faculty of the University of North Carolina at Asheville please stand. <clears throat> You, you know, the, sometimes the problem with stand up, you're not finished yet. Sometimes students, they don't follow directions quite as well as they should. So now the instructions are, please join me in a round of applause for the faculty of this great university and everyone else who makes the education of you, the students, possible every day at this wonderful place. Thank you. Much better job at following instructions. Chancellor Grant, it is now my honor to welcome other members of the platform party to bring greetings on this special day. First, State Senator Terry Van Dyne will bring greetings from the citizens of the state of North Carolina. Senator Van Dyne will be followed by Terry Henry, a chair of the Tribal Council of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians and proud UNC Asheville alumna who will bring greetings on behalf of the tribe. tribe. Next will be Mayor Esther Mannheimer, who represents the city of Asheville. She will be followed by Mr. Lou Bissett, uh, speaking on behalf of the University of North Carolina Board of Governors. And then Mr. Humansu Carvier, chair of the UNC Asheville Foundation Board, will bring greetings on behalf of that board. We will begin with Senator Van Dyne. Excuse 
Chancellor Grant, President Ross, students, faculty, and distinguished guests, greetings from the citizens of North Carolina. My name is Terry Van Dyne, and I have the honor of serving you in the North Carolina Senate. In North Carolina, we know that a strong system of public higher education is essential to the future success of our state. And as our designated public liberal arts university, UNC Asheville plays an important role in that success. The interdisciplinary learning and creative thinking that are taught within these walls are the essential tools that the next generation must develop to be thoughtful leaders and engaged citizens that we so desperately need. What I know of Chancellor Grant is that she understands learning is a process, one that starts at birth and extends throughout a lifetime. She will be a strong advocate for rich educational experiences that begin with early education and build a foundation that make the dream of college possible for North Carolina's children. Chancellor Grant, I welcome you to Western North Carolina, to Asheville, and to UNCA. And I look forward to partnering with you as you realize your vision for the university and for our great state. Shio, Ostashunale Nagad. Gahashki, Taya Hainali, Dagwado Ah, Zalagiyi, Dinilawishki, Aniwodihi. Hello and good morning, everyone. I am Chairwoman Terry Henry. I'm a council member for the Paint Town community representing the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians Tribal Council. Chancellor Grant, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to bring you greetings on behalf of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. 28 years ago, I proudly received my Bachelor of Arts degree from this university in political science, studying international relations. I was the first person in my family to receive a university degree. I often reflect on my time here with great satisfaction. The education I received from this university opened my mind to the world and taught me how to think for myself. With my BA as foundation, I developed a skill set from the professional experience gained working in my parents' small business, a federal agency, a nonprofit human rights indigenous law center, and with the addition of my Juris Doctorate from the University of Iowa College of Law in 1993, I honed my thinking and communication abilities. Over the years, I have been privileged and blessed to work with many American Indian tribal governments traveling throughout Indian country across these United States and abroad, studying and working at the United Nations, both in New York and Geneva, advocating for the human rights of indigenous peoples and in support of the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and other international instruments. I've also been privileged and blessed to play a key role in advocating for the passage of tribal law, the, the Tribal Law and Order Act of 2010 and the Violence Against Women Act in 2013 and its previous iterations. I'm honored to be given the sacred privilege of rep representing my community on the Tribal Council for six years, the last two of which as the first chairwoman of the Tribal Council, and most recently, the first chairwoman of the Tri-Council of Cherokee Nations. When I came here in 1983, I wasn't expected to succeed. In fact, the expectation of my social demographic background was failure. At the time, at the time I was here as a student, this university's atmosphere was the perfect storm for learning, for living, and a lot of hard work. So when I learned that the Eastern Band was finally entering into an agreement with the University of North Carolina at Asheville, I was thrilled. At the signing of this agreement, Chancellor Grant stated the university's commitment to creating a welcoming institution and supportive in creating a global multicultural community on campus. That is the UNCA I experienced when I was here. I look forward to the addition of Cherokee and Native Studies to, this, to my alma mater 
The tribe, we look forward to the collaboration on educational and cultural activities. I know our Cherokee students are in great and distinguished hands. Congratulations, Chancellor Grant, and thank you for including the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians in this auspicious event. All my relations, Shki. Installations are a time for the university community to come together to recognize new leadership and share the opportunities and vision for the future. Thank you for inviting me as the City of Asheville's representative to be a part of this exciting day for UNC Asheville. On behalf of the city, I'm here to officially welcome Chancellor Grant to Asheville. And I would also like to welcome those of you who have traveled here for this installation, and I hope while you're here, you get a chance to enjoy Asheville. Ch Chancellor Grant was appointed over a year ago and began working around nine months ago. And in that time, we have already had the opportunity to work together to strengthen the partnership between UNC Asheville and the city. UNC Asheville has long been connected to the citizens of Asheville. For example, for example, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute now boasts 2,200 local resident members who not only take courses and teach them as a community of learners, but who also serve the community in many ways through Leadership Asheville Seniors, for example, and Ollie's Seniors in School. It is clear that Chancellor Grant has a deep commitment to the university and our community and wants to grow the university's connection to Asheville as we nurture one community. UNC Asheville's future under the leadership of Chancellor Grant is an exciting one. And I, along with you, am excited to work with her in the coming years. Welcome Chancellor Grant. President Ross, Judge Brooks, Senator Van Dyne, Mayor Mannheimer, Chairman Smith, members of the Board of Trustees, members of the Board of Governors, Chancellor Grant, Provost Ergo, distinguished faculty, staff, and guests of the community. Good morning. I'm Lou Bissett, Vice Chairman of the Board of Governors. What a wonderful day this is in Western North Carolina, surrounded by our colleagues, family, and friends on this beautiful campus as we join together to celebrate Dr. Mary Kay Grant, the seventh Chief Executive Officer of this incredible institution. Our universities often have important ceremonial events, including convocations, commencements, and alumni gatherings all of which honor the accomplishments of our students and faculty. Our gathering today, however, is also very important because we have the opportunity to remember the University of North Carolina's long history of leadership in higher education and also to welcome a new and distinguished chancellor to, the UN to UNC Asheville and to the UNC system. UNC Asheville has earned a reputation for excellence in the liberal arts and sciences throughout its history. This university has an important role to play, not only in our city and our region, but also in our state and nation. I believe that UNC Asheville is destined to reach new heights with Chancellor Grant and the dedicated faculty and staff of this institution. Chancellor Grant, the Board of Governors welcomes you. With your deep ties to the liberal arts, you have a special appreciation for what UNC Asheville values, the centrality of learning 
and discovery through exemplary teaching, innovative scholarship, creative expression, undergraduate research, practical experience, and engaged service. The Board of Governors is confident that you will continue to build upon these high standards and traditions of excellence to fulfill the promise of future generations here in Western North Carolina. We are all excited to have you take the helm of this institution that means so much to all of us here today. We pledge to you our enthusiastic support as you work with your faculty, staff, and students to meet the many challenges and opportunities facing UNC Asheville and higher education today. Congratulations, Mary, as you now officially assume the role of Chancellor of the University of North Carolina at Asheville, and best wishes to you, your husband Jim, your family, and Sweeney, of course, who unfortunately could not be with us today. I'm, I've never understood why that is. So as you go forth to continue the very important work of this great institution, thank you very much. Chancellor Grant, distinguished guests, staff, faculty, students, friends, and members of the Asheville community, good morning. My name is Haman Shukarvir, and I have the pleasure of serving as the chair of UIC Asheville Foundation Board, and on behalf of that board, I bring greetings. As I've worked with Chancellor Grant over the last nine months, I've witnessed firsthand a leader who cares deeply for this institution and its mission as North Carolina's designated liberal arts university. She recognizes that it is people that make UNC Asheville great. It is the world-class faculty, brilliant students, and dedicated staff, and our caring community members that make this institution a nationally recognized example of excellence in education and the public liberal arts. She also recognizes that in order to maintain the standard of excellence that UNC Asheville has established, the institution must continue to strengthen its relationship with the community, and our community, in turn, must step forward and support its university. That community support, in addition to a continued commitment to state support for higher education, is vital in ensuring UNC Asheville remains accessible and affordable for future generations. In the short time that I've had the privilege of working with Chancellor Grant, I've seen the level of dedication and commitment that she brings to these and other issues that face our university today. And so, it is with great pleasure that I formally welcome Dr. Mary Grant as Chancellor of UNC Asheville, a job that I believe she began in earnest the moment she set foot onto campus. I look forward to the future as we continue under her leadership the good work of advancing UNC Asheville and affordable, high-quality, public liberal arts education. Thank you. On behalf of Chancellor Grant and the entire university, thanks to each of you for your kind words. Now Dr. Galloway will lead the community choir in a musical interlude.
That was stunning. We thank you so much for your participation today and the beauty of your voices. Thank you. It is now my privilege to welcome to the podium three additional members of the platform party to bring greetings and remarks from the people that make UNC Asheville such a wonderful institution of higher education, its faculty, staff, and students. First, Dr. Brian Butler, the Thomas Howerton Distinguished Professor of Humanities and Chair of the Faculty Senate, will speak on behalf of the UNC Asheville faculty. Dr. Butler will be followed by Mr. Robert Straub, Chair of the Chancellor's Advisory Council and, the UNC Asheville, a, and a UNC Asheville alumnus who will speak on behalf of the, the uh, staff. Mr. Straub will be followed by Ms. Maya Newland, President of the UNC Asheville Student Government Association and a student trustee who will speak on behalf of the student body. Welcome, Dr. Butler. Thank you. Uh, the great American philosopher W.E.B. Du Bois described education in the liberal arts as not a dream, but a mighty reality. A glimpse of the higher life, the broader possibilities of humanity, which is granted to the man, use gender neutral there, who amid the rush and roar of living pauses four short years to learn what living means. In that spirit, UNC Asheville was formed. In 1968, William E. Highsmith, our first chancellor, outlined the basic objectives for the university. To develop and maintain a strong liberal arts program. To place responsibility for learning on the student. To encourage students to develop and pursue their own goals and to express and develop an experimental attitude toward the processes of higher education. 47 years later, UNC Asheville is still realizing these goals at the highest level. And our new chancellor, Mary Kay Grant, is the ideal person to carry forward and nurture our community and this vital mission. Mary Grant's career is a shining example of commitment, a record of passionate advocacy of the liberal arts enterprise in both word and deed. Under her leadership, MCLA strengthened and solidified its excellence. Recently, she extended this dedicated service beyond her home institution to lead our community of peers by serving as president of COPLAC, the Council of Public Liberal Arts Colleges. In, do, in so doing, she revealed a great strength that we at UNC Asheville are thrilled to exploit. I mean, support. Mary Grant, <laughs> Mary, has a unique ability to build community. Hers is a continuous example of bringing people together with common purpose. As a member of the search committee that reviewed the files, I can attest to the fact that she is extraordinary in this way. Her list of accomplishments is long and attests to her amazing ability to bring together disparate groups and to create great successes out of significant challenges. Her record speaks for herself. But even a bookish academic can sometimes worry about what's on paper. Two amazing interviews were much more than convincing. Meeting her, it became easy for me to understand the transformations at MC MCLA. Under her leadership, MCLA became a model of citizenship and a cultural center of the region. Talk to her, you'll know why. She is obviously perfect for UNC Asheville, and once we met her, we were just left to hope that she would join us. I'll always remember that great thrill to be downstate at the announcement and find out that she will be our next chancellor, our new chancellor. But it was on the bus ride back to Asheville after the announcement that I came to appreciate just what a genuine person she is and how naturally she comes to this role. I watched as she walked the aisles of the bus all the way back, greeting everyone. She engaged literally every person on that bus, really engaged. And let me tell you, it was a sizable bunch. I was struck by the way she gravitated immediately to our students, sharing the pride that we all have for them. I mean, of course, our students are awesome, and the students on our, um, on our committee were the best people on the committee. They were incredible. 
Um, she also uh, did a great job with the trustees, and I learned to truly admire the time and effort the trustees put into this. They do it purely out of love of the institution. It's very impressive. Then she talked to, as well, the staff, and we have a wonderful staff, and she, did, she clearly listened immediately to what the needs of that was. Finally, the faculty. And I had to be, I was thrilled. She's genuinely committed to meeting us, to staying in the conversation, and to learn, learn about our diverse intellectual contributions. This eagerness to find out more about the faculty, to get to know us as individuals, to familiarize herself with what we do, just showed how much that she cares about what we bring to the school and how much this school means. Um, she's ready to lead. She even took a moment steering the bus. It was really kind of hilarious. <laughs> These initial impressions have only been reinforced since she has now begun to spread her contagious enthusiasm around the campus and in town and downstate. She really seems to be everywhere. I think the first day of class I drove up and there she was running with Sweeney out along the parkway. And that was, I think, probably seven o'clock in the morning. Um, she seems to be everywhere. I don't think she ever stops. In her actions, she exemplifies the virtues that the liberal arts represent. Virtues such as respect for intellectual engagement and life's diverse meanings, empathy, and the ability to search for positive opportunities and apparent frustrations. We have a chancellor that lives the liberal arts. Chancellor Mary Kay Grant is a passionate advocate of the public liberal arts and a proven community builder. UNC Asheville is a special public institution set in a unique and wonderful community. She is the perfect chancellor for us and the ideal leader for our community and our state. As a unifier, she models what we stand for. Mary joins us in the project of bringing to students, to the people of our region, and our state, all that the liberal arts promise. She is fiercely committed to giving our students that glimpse of the higher life through the study and cultivation of the broader possibilities of humanity. As chair of the Faculty Senate, I am honored to offer her the faculty's heartfelt welcome to UNC Asheville. Good morning. UNC Asheville is a truly amazing place. Since its founding in 1927, this university's strength has always been its people. It's been and remained about the student-centered culture. It's been and remains about student interaction with staff and faculty. It's been and remains about the exceptional commitment of the staff, faculty, except the commitment was never the exception. It was always the norm and it remains so today. From the days of the Great Depression, when our staff and faculty accepted butter and eggs in lieu of money for tuition, to the associate registrar who convinced me that I could succeed and excel here as a student, this university has always been first and foremost about its student. For those of us who work at UNC Asheville, this isn't so much a job as it is an extraordinary opportunity to work with men and women <clears throat> at such an important time in their lives. The story often told by alumni for generations has been about how well they were prepared for graduate school and the workforce. I regularly hear about graduate school faculty being amazed at the level of preparation of UNC Asheville graduates. It is about UNC Asheville staff and faculty mentoring students as emerging professionals, whether it be student researchers in a lab or building managers in the Highsmith Union. Our interactions on this campus are about mutual respect, personal growth, and professional development. There would not be such a deeply centered, a deeply student-centered culture without the exceptional commitment of the men and women who work at UNC Asheville. Years ago, an 18-year-old who had just become a freshman senator needed to meet with Chan then Chancellor Dave Brown about a student government project. Scared and sweaty, he went to the chancellor's office. There he was met with an unexpected level of respect by the chancellor. The student recounted that this treatment by the chancellor has remained with him ever since and he has always treated everyone with the kind of respect he received that day at UNC Asheville. Were it not for one particular staff member, my life would be different. 
Director, the director of student activities, hearing me say I could never get a Fulbright, told me simply and bluntly, cut the crap, talk to your professors, and tell me what you need to help. The professors, of course, were more than willing to do anything for my success, and a year later I found myself researching urban myths and history and tutoring math and English in Ecuador. Finally, this brings to mind a story about a bright student who seemed to forget she was bright, failed her sophomore year, and was about to be suspended. A trusted staff member took her under his wing, designed a plan, and gave her the mentorship necessary to turn it all around. In her last four semesters, she went from failing to being a near 4.0 student. She's currently studying design in Cairo, Egypt. Chancellor Grant, you have come to a truly amazing place. And in less than nine months, it is clear that your commitment to students, our staff and faculty, and our community continues the 80-year legacy of creating an exceptional environment in which our students are able to thrive. Congratulations. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Give me a sec. What is the future of UNC Asheville? Why is it important that we, as a university, pose this question? What do our actions now mean for the prosperity of our campus and the people that it serves? The future of UNC Asheville lies in the hands, minds, and actions of those who are here now. The professors who are responsible for enlightening the students, the staff who promote a welcoming and inclusive environment for the students, the senior staff who make final decisions on campus welfare, and finally, the students who are responsible for receiving the support and applying the information that comes from the groups of people I have just mentioned. With that being said, UNC Asheville is ranked as the nation's eighth best public liberal arts college. We jumped up the ranks from 159th to 148th of the best national liberal arts colleges, a list with both public and private institutions. Now I pose the question of why does this even matter? The experiences I have had, both inside and outside of the classroom, were not in eight, a 148, a three, or a one. They were personal, character building, very stress inducing, heartwarming, but they were meaningful to me. Our nation is so concerned on the quantifi quantifiable value of education, healthcare, a happy lifestyle, and even people, actual human beings. What I care about and what I hope transfers over to our new chancellor is that the individual, meaning each and every student, leaves this university with their own right to be enlightened and ready to spread their talents with not only a university, but Asheville, our nation, and the world, because we are that gifted. It was a cold winter day when I walked through the doors of Phillips Hall and up the stairs to meet our new chancellor. I walked into her office as she was greeting all the visitors and engaging them in conversation. I can vividly remember the first conversation with I, I had with her. And when you can say that, you know you met somebody special. She was the first person I told that I wanted to run for student body president, and I explained to her how nervous I was and how I wasn't sure if I should actually do it. I remember she told me this. She said, Maya, you go for it. Oftentimes, us women second guess ourselves even we are completely qualified. Have faith in yourself. And at that moment, I fangirled and I screamed internally and I knew that our chancellor was woke. And if you don't know what woke means, you should Google it. <laughs> our campus needs a chancellor who is woke and let me tell you why in the brief time that I have left. Slacklining, vegan lifestyles, mountain hikes, concerts at the Orange Peel, tanning in hammocks, perusing through Asheville and its restaurants are all good, and I appreciate those identities of our university and our campus community, but that is only one face of our university. UNC Asheville students are in a continuing process of evolution beyond the singular identity. The demographics of North Carolina are rapidly changing. In just a few years, the majority of high school graduates will be non-white. A diverse campus representative of the state's population must be the norm rather than just an aspiration. More students are coming to college with physical, psychological, and learning disabilities that must be accommodated. Our campus must be safe and supportive for students who are gender non-conforming and are non-heteronormative with their sexual identities. Non-traditional students and students with children must also be have support as they need to succeed as well. We need to celebrate all identities represented on our campus, 
and celebrate them in university programming and in our liberal arts curriculum. We need to provide a space for students and individuals to practice their culture and for others to learn about it. We need to continually reiterate the fact that we cannot offer a liberal arts education without being diverse in our teachings, practices, and thought processes. I'm going to repeat that. We need to continually reiterate the fact that we cannot be a liberal arts educa educator without being diverse in our teachings, our practices, and our thought processes. Our students need to be pushed to learn about each other and themselves, to form communities with those who we know who will support each other and those who we know are willing to learn how. There should be no reason why anyone comes here with a student population as small as we are and feel excluded. This is a small campus. It should be a unified one that understands, supports, and celebrates the differences of its students. We need someone who understands this, and I know and believe that this one person is Chancellor Grant. In the short time that she has been here, she has made leaps and bounds to reach out to all diversities of our campus to better understand what they need. From, talking, from taking selfies to RA, with RAs, to offering to visit student organization meetings, to hosting black faculty and staff mixers, to attending the LGBT student faculty meet and greet, to just overall being approachable when even walking her dog Sweeney around campus. Chancellor Grant, you are a rock star. The student body welcomes you with open arms, and though I may be graduating next semester, I will always be a proud bulldog and ready to support you in all that you do for our institution. Welcome home. Thank you, Brian, Robert, and Maya. I now have the privilege of introducing today's speaker, Dr. Les Peirce. Dr. Peirce is a pillar in higher education, a champion for public liberal arts, an outdoorsman, an artist, a musician, and a dear friend of Chancellor Grant. His accomplishments and contributions are numerous. For more than 15 years, Dr. Peirce has been president of the Evergreen State College, a nationally recognized public liberal arts college. Previously, he held prestigious positions at Washington State University and Idaho State University. Dr. Peirce was the first black elected official in the state of Idaho, serving as a city councilman and then mayor of Pocatello. He later served as director of Idaho's Departments of Administration and Health and Welfare. In the private sector, he served as partner and chief operating officer of Power Engineering Incorporated. Chancellor Grant and Dr. Peirce share a strong belief in the importance of the public liberal arts as evidenced by their commitment to the Council of Public Liberal Arts Colleges a coalition of 27 institutions of higher education dedicated to championing the cause of high quality liberal arts education in the public sector. We are honored to have him with us here today. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Les Peirce. Maya, you're a rock star. <laughs> One more time. <clears throat> Boy, it's nice to be back. President Ross and members of the Board of Trustees, my dear colleague, Chancellor Ann Ponder, and my old, old friend, David Brown. David, it's so nice to see you again. Members of the community, friends, I am so delighted to be back here in Asheville. I had the privilege of serving as your commencement speaker in 2009, and you gave me an honorary doctorate in that year. And during that year, at the same time, you gave an honorary doctorate to Doc Watson, my music idol 
and world-renowned musician. That day was magic. We laughed, we celebrated, and then Doc surprised us all by turning to the students out who were graduating and said, how would you like me to play a few numbers for you? And the place erupted, and he gave us a mini concert. Afterwards, Doc and I spent about an hour in a garden, hot summer day, and he was waiting for his ride. And I said to Doc, you know, Doc, you've always been my idol. I've had the privilege of having a lot of honors in higher education. I said, but never in my fondest dreams would I have imagined that I would have Doc Watson open for me. <laughs> Doc laughed and said, that's good, Les. That's good. That's real good. I'll never forget that. And I continue to be amazed at the connections that I have to this institution. Starting, starting many, many years ago in 1989 when I met David, when I was first hired at the Evergreen State College, and went on a tour with him and then my boss, Joe Olander, to New York City to begin to tell the story of this thing we called COPLAC, are the public ivies. So my connection to this dream has been extraordinary. That spring day was not like, unlike today. It was filled with high spirits, special emotional chemistry that can only come from graduation and what it generates. Commencement is the time of completion and new futures. Presidential installations are a time of celebration and the beginning of new futures as well. I've had the pleasure of working with Chancellor Grant in advancing the mission of public liberal arts education for over a decade. Our collaboration has been some of the most rewarding experiences that I have had in my career. I'm here today to present to you Chancellor Grant as I have grown to know her over time. In leadership and in character, you can judge the quality of a person by the friendships they make and the friendships that they keep over time. The rare character of Mary Grant is exemplified by the diversity of friends and families who have traveled from all over this country to be with her today. We've had her family introduced, brothers, sister-in-laws, nieces, trustees, state officials from Massachusetts, and a kid from Pocatello, Idaho, who ended up at the Evergreen State College. It is an extraordinary statement about who Mary is. I first met Mary more than 12 years ago when she joined the board of the Council of Public Liberal Arts Co Colleges. She quickly became a leader on the National Council through her warmth, her energy, her innovation, and her intelligence. I watched Mary over the years take the smallest college in the Massachusetts system to a first choice college for students in that state and one of the top public liberal arts colleges in this country. She dramatically grew the donor base and the support for the college. People give to institutions that they trust and believe in. Mary grew that trust, embraced the dreams of the community, took time to know the community, connected businesses in the campus, and had a belief in the community to come together, to focus in a very focused direction to make a difference. She has said that you should do your work with a clear message and a distinct vision of where you want to go. Here is what I know about Mary. These thoughts, 
Stay close to the students and keep them first. Build deep relationships. Trust and support the people you work with every day. Have fun. Listen and consider a, bar, a broad range of advice. Be patient and take the long view. She has an incredible warmth and energy, keen intellectual and emotional intelligence, personal integrity, and great political instincts. Now, Mary joins this extraordinary institution, an institution that I have admired for so many years. The University of North Carolina, Asheville, one of the top public liberal arts colleges in the United States. And she's joined you at a time when there will be extraordinary challenges for all of us in public education. A public that is concerned about cost, increasing new competitors, a greater demand for accountability, greater competition for traditional students, and there continues to be this growing demand for STEM degrees with little recognition of the historical role that public liberal arts colleges have played in the arts and sciences. And then there is the continual ebb and flow of state for support for higher education caused by economic recession and a shift in public policy as we think about the role of public colleges in this country. Mary is a leader who will direct her energies towards the internal health of this institution first, while also recognizing that in order to be internally strong, you have to have powerful external support from local communities, from alumni, from the citizens of North Carolina, and you must build and maintain and sustain those commitments and those relationships authentically, deeply, and continually. She will be an advocate for this college that will make this whole community proud. She will be a powerful voice for the value and the importance of public liberal arts education. UNC Asheville has had a historical mission as a public liberal arts college, as we all know. The Evergreen State College and UNC Asheville were founding members of the Council of Public Liberal Arts Colleges. We came together in the belief that students from all backgrounds should have the opportunity for a high quality liberal arts education. That kids that have a dream that come from poverty to kids that have resources ought to be able to be engaged with outstanding faculty, to have a rich, broad kind of diverse education that takes them from the classroom to the, to the outer world, that ensures that this democracy of ours provides and ensures access and that all individuals in the United States have access to education. It is, Mary has been such a key leader in the growth of an organization nationally that started 15 years ago with 14 members and a very pivotal time when Mary joined the board, when we recognized that if we were really going to tell the story of the importance of public liberal arts education, we needed to come together and make not only a financial commitment, 
about a commitment to recruit and to identify institutions all over this country to be a part of this adventure with us. And it was a pivotal time, and Mary played a key role in leadership in helping us convince everyone that was a member, all 14 of us, to triple the amount of money that we would include to build a national organization, to hire a full-time director, and to house this institution and provide resources for it to begin to tell the broader story of public liberal arts education. We made the major decision to move that organization from the Evergreen State College to UNC Asheville because it was central and because it had such a long, rich commitment to public liberal arts education. They were exciting times, but they were times that took extraordinary ri risks on all of our parts. Mary's voice was key in stepping up and saying this is something that we have to do. We were all scared, but we knew that the risk was worth it. And look at the returns. Now 28 institutions. People applying that want to be a part and to be designated and to understand the importance of public liberal arts education. I believe that we must all continue to affirm the love of learning, critical thinking, a broad understanding of the world and its people, and learning across significant differences, theory and practice, because the future health of our democracy depends on those steps. And I know that not only will this institution grow and thrive, internally and externally, but with Mary's leadership and engagement locally, regionally, and nationally, the future of public liberal arts education will be strong and bright. And as I begin the process of retiring as the president of the Evergreen State College, that makes me feel really good. You know, Evergreen is the youngest of all of the liberal arts colleges. We were founded in 1967 and opened our doors in 1970. Unlike the Bulldogs, we are the Gooey Ducks. <laughs> now, the Gooey Ducks, a giant clam that is indigenous to the Puget Sound area in the Northwest. Our young new faculty in 1967 decided that the motto of the institution would be omnia extaris, extend all, reach everywhere. It was a message about taking risk and reaching out and extending, but the students said what Omnia Extaras really meant was, let it all hang out. <laughs> and so, as my gift to Mary and this institution that I now am a part of, I want to share with you the Evergreen experience. When I arrived there in 1989 as a new vice president, I sat out on Red Square. And the president then came at commencement and he said, we will now have the alma mater and the evergreen fight song. And I sat on a bench and out came students in tuxedos and a pianist to the grand piano. And they started with the alma mater. And it went something like this. Omnia ex stars. Omnia ex stars. Alma mater evergreen. Omnia ex stars. Boom, boom, 
boom, boom, boom, go, gooey ducks, go. <laughs> Through the wind and the rain, let's go. Siphon high, swivel out, swivel all about, let it all hang out. Go, gooey ducks, go. Raise your head when the tide is low. Siphon high, swivel out, swivel all about, let it all hang out. Thank you. Thank you. And to Asheville and my friend Mary Grant, I say omnia extaras. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Peirce. We appreciate so much your remarks, uh, and I think there was a lot of great advice in there. Uh, some, however, maybe the students should ignore. Uh, <laughs> for more than 200 years, the state of North Carolina has recognized the importance of higher education in improving the lives and well-being of its citizens. Over that long history, the University of North Carolina system has achieved national prominence for the quality of its programs and the loyalty that binds the people of this state to their public university. In 1927, the institution that would become the University of North Carolina at Asheville, was founded as part of the Buncombe County Public School System to serve the higher education needs of Asheville and the surrounding area. In the intervening years, UNC Asheville has evolved and grown to serve the entire state of North Carolina as its designated liberal arts university. In spite of that statewide mission, UNC Asheville has never lost touch with its roots in the community of Asheville and Western North Carolina, where the university was once dubbed the College in the Sky. We gather today to install the seventh chancellor of this institution. Today's ceremony represents a symbolic compact between you, the faculty, the staff, the students, the alumni and trustees, and your new chancellor. I have high expectations for UNC Asheville under Chancellor Grant's leadership, but particularly in these challenging and complex times, she needs and deserves your full support. In just a few moments, the Honorable Athena Brooks, Chief District Court Judge in the 29th District of North Carolina, and yet another proud alumnus of this university, will administer the oath of office. As she takes the oath, Chancellor Grant will place her hand on the Bible. Following the oath, Chancellor Grant will receive the Chancellor's medallion which symbolizes her authority as the leader of this institution. The medallion will be brought to the podium by her husband, Jim Canavan. Through such traditions, we mark the continuation of leadership and vision that has enabled UNC Asheville to achieve so much in its 88-year history. So now, Chancellor Grant, will you please stand to the left of the Bible, and I ask Judge Brooks and Mr. Canavan to join us. Chancellor Grant, you have the great privilege and responsibility of leading this university in the years ahead. As you take the oath of office, I urge you to use your position and your authority 
to help the University of North Carolina at Asheville grow and develop in a manner that benefits this region and this state. If you'll please place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you, Mary K. Grant, solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States? And do you solemnly and sincerely swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the powers and authorities which are or may be established for the government thereof? And that you will endeavor to support, maintain, and defend the Constitution of said state, not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States, and in entering upon the responsibilities of the office of Chancellor of the University of North Carolina at Asheville. Do you undertake to fulfill its duties to the best of your abilities and without fear or favor to cherish and encourage sound scholarship and the search for truth and to dedicate the powers of the University of North Carolina at Asheville to the intellectual, moral, and physical education of youth and to the development of a moral and enlightened citizenship. Do you further promise to dedicate this university to impartial and sympathetic service to all the people of North Carolina? Further, do you swear you will well and truly execute the duties of the office of Chancellor of the University of North Carolina at Asheville to the best of your skill and ability according to law. So help you God. I do. Congratulations. Friends of the University, it is now my great pleasure and distinct honor to present to you the seventh chancellor of the University of North Carolina at Asheville, Mary Kathleen Grant. Thank you. Thank you all uh, so very much. Wow. Thank you all for sticking around. <laughs> um, I want to thank beloved man Jerry Wolf for beginning today, and I want to extend a thanks before I get started to Dr. Rick Chess for concluding today. There will be a beginning and there will be an end. <laughs> thank you, President Ross, Judge Brooks, members of the Board of Governors. Chair Smith and members of the UNC Asheville Board of Trustees for your confidence and your trust. Thank you to our elected officials, members of the Foundation Board, Athletic and Alumni Boards, and the National Parents Council for your support in all that you do for UNC Asheville. Thank you to all who spoke today for your kind and gracious words. You represent some of the many constituencies that make up this great institution and our communities, and you will be essential partners as we continue to build and strengthen the work and the impact of UNC Asheville. What a privilege to share this platform with such distinguished and accomplished colleagues, friends, and alumni. I appreciate your words of welcome and advice, and I am grateful to know that I can and will count on you for your support. Les, thank you for your leadership, 
your singing ability, but most, likely, most, most of all, thank you for your friendship and for introducing us to a true fighting song. That is great. Thank you to all of the delegates who are representing higher education institutions across the country. I applaud the work that you do. I applaud your commitment to making a difference. I applaud your commitment to education. Thank you, my colleagues and friends, for being here today. It means a great deal to have you here. Thank you to my new colleagues and my chancellor friends from the UNC system, a system comprised of 17 campuses serving students, changing lives, and strengthening communities. Thank you for your support. I look forward to doing the important work we have together, and I so appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ann Ponder. Thank you, Jim Mullen and David Brown, for your leadership, your stewardship, your support, and your friendship. How fortunate am I to have three great colleagues and friends and higher education leaders and fellow travelers. We now share a history. Each of you has a responsibility for this place, and I am so honored that you are here today. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. I appreciate so much that Nancy Schumann and John Highsmith are here and that Doug Orr is with us. Doug served as the interim chancellor, providing me support as I made my way from the Berkshires to Asheville. Thank you, Doug. I am just grateful that you and Darcy got back from your world book tour and time to be here today. So thank you, Doug, for all that you have done for UNC Asheville and higher education. Thank you. And thank you to all the students and the clubs and organizations that created flags and marched in today's processional. You are, after all, the reason why we are all here. So thank you all for being here. This is really great. I want to thank the faculty and the staff who put such heart into this week and to all things you do at UNC Asheville. I am honored to serve with you. I am honored to get to know you, and I look forward to traveling this road together. Thank you so much for all that you do, the way you have welcomed me, and the good work we have going forward. I value you, I appreciate you, respect you, and I am learning so much from being here with you. Thank you to my faculty colleagues and my staff friends here at UNC Asheville. This week, we have shared a series of thoughtful, creative, innovative, smart, engaging, and yes, I will say it, fun activities and events celebrating UNC Asheville. From panel discussions on the value and practical application of a liberal arts education to the powerful impact of undergraduate research, a community gathering at the YMI that brought together friends and partners with UNCAA faculty, staff, alumni, and board members art openings and art making, readings of original essays, stories, and poems, and stargazing. A library installation that takes us through the twists and turns, missions, names, and pieces of land that have made up UNC Asheville. And just yesterday, an inspiring We Can Change the World event on the campus quad. And I'm telling you, based on what I saw, we can change the world. And last night, under a clear sky with a crescent moon, we were treated to an exceptional jazz concert featuring our own UNC Asheville faculty. Wow, was that special. Thank you so much for that gift. And to all of you who have enriched us today with the music and the voices that came together, I thank you for being here to enriching the celebration. How beautiful, how beautiful. And Merritt, you are the third best tenor. That was excellent job. And no installation would be complete in the creative mountains of Asheville and Western North Carolina if we hadn't had a custom brewed ale and an original ice cream. So thank you, Oscar Wong, and thank you, Greg and Ashley Garrison, for contributing to this exciting few days. I don't know. I don't know what means more to me, the medallion, or having an ice cream that's named for me. So uh, we'll see how this all turns out over time, and I'll let you know. 
Um, I mean, it's also so meaningful to have had this gathering on Family Weekend, where we welcome families to, to campus and we celebrate with the members of the National Family Council. I thank all of you. And I would like to extend a joyous bulldog thanks to every member of this campus and our extended campus communities of friends and partners for all you have done leading up to today. Thank you for your energy and your ideas, your attention to details, small and great. And please join me in an extra special thanks to the installation committee. Their names are in the program. They have worked with great thought and great care. And can we give them a round of applause, please? Now, there are lots of folks who deserve individual shout outs, but I'm not going to do that because there are a lot of them. But I would be remiss if I did not thank personally Elizabeth Becker for her remarkable attention to detail and her creative and calm approach to helping to organize today. So Elizabeth, wherever you are, I thank you. UNC Asheville is blessed with a world-class faculty, faculty who are experts in their field and bring out the very best in their students. We are blessed with a staff who genuinely care and who work smart and hard with a can-do spirit. Just yesterday, outside of Phillips Hall, appeared a lending library. Now, you know what that is. You walk around historic neighborhoods, and there are these beautiful boxes with books. And one of those appeared outside of Phillips Hall. And it was made by two members of our carpentry department, Daryl Cayundel and Chris Castellani, with support of the provost office. And it was just another gift this special week. But that is what we have here. They took an old maple tree, and they turned it into a way for continued learning. That is what faculty and staff here do at UNC Asheville. We have governance boards that make all the difference in our collective success and direction. We have alumni who make us proud beyond words. Community partners who know that we really are in this together. And students who give us a reason to get up every morning with a renewed spirit of hope that we have a future that is bright, a future that will be in their good hands. What the spirit and energy and spectacular weather we have joined this week. We must bottle up all this goodwill but not to stash it away like a fine wine, but to continue to pour it, to share it, to use it daily to engage and invite ongoing creativity, optimism, and the building of community. As the seventh chancellor of UNC Asheville, I am blessed to join this institution, this system, this community. You have embraced Jim and me, and you have helped Sweeney feel like the top dog, even in Rocky's mighty shadow. You have invited us for dinner, for coffee, for walks, for hikes. You have reached out to us to make sure this new place became home. You provided great support throughout this transition and helped us immensely last spring when my mother passed away. You would have really liked her, and she would have loved all of you. Some of you even made us banana pudding, because that just makes everything better. And it did, and it does. I am even more blessed today to have such good friends and members of my family here. For almost a year now, since the incredibly exciting day in Raleigh, when the Board of Governors and President Ross introduced us, life changed at a pretty fast pace. There were warm and teary goodbyes as we left MCLA, North Adams, and the Berkshires, pulling up roots at one end of the Appalachian Trail and putting them in at another. Leaving Massachusetts, we determined that we were not saying goodbye, but merely farewell. You don't say goodbye to people whom you love and with whom you have a shared history. If you are fortunate as we have been, you take these good people, these good friends, into the new future with you. And when you invite them to come, look out, they really do come. <laughs> Joining us today are dear friends from many parts of our lives in Massachusetts, friends who traveled from UMass and MCLA, from all corners of the Berkshires, from Staten Island, Fitchburg, and Worcester, and even a kid from Idaho. Thank you, thank you. Your friendship and your presence here today means the world to Jim and me. It also means we have hit an all-time high of Red Sox fans gathered in Western North Carolina at one time. <laughs> this, too, is very helpful this time of year for anyone who's been following the Red Sox. 
So thank you, my friends. You honor me with your presence here today as you have honored Jim and I by being such good, true, and caring friends. Perhaps it also gives new meaning to a famous phrase of a son of North Carolina that maybe one can go home ahead again if you bring home with you. Thank you, friends, for being here. My brothers, sisters, sisters-in-law, brother-in-law, and nieces who are here, it's been a year of significant life changes for us all. There were college graduations, engagements, new jobs, new condos, new homes purchased and renovated. We rejoiced as we welcomed our newest family member, Colton, and we grieved as we lost mom, or the queen mother, as she preferred to be called. We are reminded how life can change and how fortunate we are to have one another, to love one another, and to support one another. It's OK to show a little emotion, right? <laughs> to have my brothers, Wally and Ed, my brother-in-law, John, my sisters, Susan and Christine, my sisters-in-law, Kathy and Pat, my nieces, Sarah, Madeline and Mackenzie here is a huge gift, and I love you all. Jim, I have always considered ourselves so fortunate that our two separate families immediately became one. There was such an easy bond and mutual affection and respect between our parents, Jim and Hannah, Walter and Mary. They're gone now, and we miss them very much every day, but boy, would they be happy to see all of you here today. They would really love this. And Jim, what can I say to you? A lot. Um, <laughs> thank you for being a source of support, love, and friendship over the 30 years we have been together, from moving mountains and moving to the mountains. You have been a trailblazer, and now you are a bulldog. But you are much more than that. Thank you for making a difference. You have made so through your own significant professional work and a true commitment to civic engagement and social justice, and I'm deeply grateful for you. I love you all. Thank you for being here today. So here we are today, September 19th, 2015. One of the many great things that, about a day like this is that it underscores we have at least one thing in common. We all care about this place, our mission, our students, and this community. This installation is less about me, it is about UNC Asheville, this relatively young institution. One like so many across the country that was cobbled together over the years by individuals who shared a common belief and had strategic understanding that access to education was essential to the well-being and future progress of a community and a people. Over the years, we've had different names, different degree-granting authority, different parcels of land and physical structures, all paving the way to the UNC Asheville of today, a premier, public, nationally ranked and recognized liberal arts university. I take the helm of this outstanding university at an exciting time, but also at a time of uncertainty. We face a future of unknowns as well as opportunities. We do understand a bit better now the challenges that we brought with us from the 20th century. The challenge of climate change, of global inequality and global conflict, the ongoing challenges of race, class, and gender, the challenges of hunger, poverty, ignorance, and disease. But we do not face these challenges unarmed. We do have opportunities to do better. In fact, our most powerful tool in taking on these challenges is right here. The combination of optimistic, courageous, bright, hardworking students and a university of liberal arts with a faculty and staff ready, willing, and able to take on the task of preparing the next generation. I have every confidence that the students and alumni of this university will be and are well equipped to face the challenges of the 21st century. In just a couple of years, we will admit a class of students, nearly all of whom will have been born in this rapidly changing, fast-moving 21st century. The future is now, and I say that we are ready. I know we are producing the graduate that our future demands, and so do many others. 
For the last several years, Peter D. Hart Research Associates has conducted national employer surveys with a goal of identifying the most important skills and qualities that employers are looking for. Consistently, they have found that employers are looking for individuals who understand what it means to work in a global context, in a technology-driven environment. Individuals who can be creative, innovative problem solvers, who can apply knowledge and skills in new, rapidly changing settings, and who have a strong sense of ethics and integrity. UNC Asheville students and graduates have those skills. They are those people. Whether majoring in music, math, or mechatronics, our students are encouraged to create, perform, research, publish, and to tackle the unknown with creativity, curiosity, and resilience. They are taught and coached by some of the finest faculty in the world. Our students are problem solvers. They are individuals who approach their studies with curiosity and a critical eye. They think on their feet. They are both empathetic and analytic. They can communicate clearly. They know they not just use, but they are creating and shaping new tools of technology. And they can and do bring people together to make change happen. And the world agrees. You may have seen what's become my favorite magazine cover, Forbes magazine, in which it declares that the hot new degree in Silicon Valley is the liberal arts degree. Well, welcome to the club. Or perhaps you have read journalist Fareed Zakaria's most recent book, In Defense of Liberal Education, in which he makes a well-researched and well-written case for the liberal arts. UNC Asheville, as you know, is home to the Bulldogs. We're a Division I school, and our student athletes perform very strong academically, athletically, and civically. So I particularly like to quote that Zakaria attributes to Nobel Prize winning chemist Thomas Czech. And he says, Cross-training may exercise key muscle groups more effectively than spending a, the amount of time working out in a sport of interest. Analogously, a liberal arts education encourages scientists to improve their competitive edge by cross-training in the humanities or arts. It develops a student's ability to collect and organize facts and opinions, to analyze them and weigh their value, and to articulate an argument. Skills check notes that may serve them better than simply writing, with all due respect to my scientist friends, another lab report. And a few years ago, I had the opportunity to hear Norman Augustine, the former CEO of Lockheed Martin, speak in Washington, DC. He spoke with great passion about the value of a liberal arts education. And Fareed Zachariah also quoted Norm Augustine, when Augustine said with great passion, passion, certainly when it comes to life's major decisions, would it not be well for the leaders and employees of our government and our nation's firms to have the knowledge of the world's greatest philosophers and the provocative dilemmas found in the works of great authors and playwrights? Augustine answered his own question with a resounding yes. So where do we go from here? How do we build on the hard, extraordinary work of those who have gone before? How do we make the most of this opportunity? I'm not going to outline a multi-point plan today for where we will go and how will we get there. You can all breathe a sigh of relief. But I'd like to share some thoughts about what we must do, what we will do to continue to be successful, to continue to produce the best educated citizenry, what we must do together. UNC Asheville's Latin motto translates to, I lift my eyes to the mountains. And as I lift my eyes to the mountains, this is what I see. This is my challenge for all of us a call to our collective action, that we will continue to produce an educated, enlightened citizenry. We will develop new partnerships and new approaches to fulfilling our role as the public liberal arts university for the state of North Carolina and as a national and global leader institution in this important sector of schools and within the Council of Public Liberal Arts Colleges. We will be a good neighbor deepening our partnerships with our community and collaborating to solve common problems and shared concerns. We are and will continue to be a partner in innovation and creativity that are essential to a strong city, to a strong and vibrant region. We will contribute to economic, civic, intellectual, cultural, and social development through education and advance both the development and application of knowledge. We will play a role in assisting those who are disadvantaged to have a better life. We will be a leader in service learning and civic engagement. 
We will provide a space apart for faculty and students to have meaningful engagement that supports critique and dissent. We will remain committed to teaching and learning and embrace student-centered education as a core value. We will support an environment that intentionally welcomes and celebrates diversity, where diverse cultural, social, and educational interests, activities, and perspectives can flourish. We will knock down the silos that discourage collaboration. We will create new links, both internally and with the larger community and across the system, to bring to bear all of our strengths and resources. We will reaffirm and take strategic risks. We will ensure that this place, our purpose, our mission is strong. We must identify new resources and support for our students and to ensure that we invest in excellence across the institution and that new opportunities are realized. We will lift our eyes, our minds, our hearts, our passions, our hopes, our dreams, our intellect, and apply all to a common good. And we will do these things together and with intention. You will hear me say at commencement, and I hope for many commencements to come, that from where I am standing, I have a glimpse into the future. On that day when I look at our students, their families, friends, alumni, and community members, I am reminded again and again of the important work that we get to do together. Our students inspire me, and I am grateful for the support, guidance, and love that they receive from you and their families and that they give to one another. I am encouraged and truly hopeful about the challenges we face because of their smarts, their tenacity, and their desire for a better future. Another Massachusetts native, Robert F. Kennedy, challenged a gener generation thusly, and he said, history will judge you, and as the years pass, you will ultimately judge yourself as to the extent to which you have used your gifts and talents to enlighten and enrich the lives of your fellow men. In your hands lies the future of your world and the fulfillment of the best qualities of your own spirit. And today and tomorrow, and the, we are in the days ahead, the future rests in our hands. I would not be here today without the great good fortune of a foundation that came from a strong, loving, hardworking, and caring family or without having the doors of education, public higher education, open wide, providing me with access to an education and a lifetime of opportunities. Opportunities that I get to realize anew with all of you here in North Carolina, here at UNC Asheville. Yesterday, a member of the faculty handed me a card that was signed by several faculty members, offering their congratulations. I had a chance last night after I took my shoes off, the most important things, to sit down and read that card and to reflect on the day and savor the moment. I appreciate deeply the good wishes and the quote that you, my faculty friends, wrote in that card, a quote by Nelson Mandela. And it goes, that it always seems impossible until it is done. True words indeed. So let us take the time again to lift our eyes to the mountains, to remind ourselves that all things are possible, that the work is never done, that much is at stake, that stakes are high, but the rewards are great. I thank you for this privilege. I thank you for your support. I am honored to be the Chancellor of the University of North Carolina, Asheville. Thank you. instead of a benediction. So what shall we make of this moment? The ceremony nearly over, its robes and hoods soon to be returned to the closet, its chairs folded, its words 
dispersed into air. What shall we make of the promise of this hour? Here, where the rule of reason catches a glimpse of the fugitive imagination and feels an urge to charge and chase it down and lock it up and away where it will pose no further threat to order. But even from the smallest cell in the deepest hole, imagination finds a way out and into the objective eye, the skeptical mind. Pisgah lifts our eyes. Are we the ones assigned, called to the work of creating a universe that will hold and honor every kind of intelligence? Let us live as if it were so. Even at a dark time, when we ourselves are seen as fugitives, scientists, humanists, artists, explorers all, let us know with our feet the ground on which we stand. Let us lift our eyes to the mountains, Esa Enai El Heharim, to honor the vision of one who believed our help would descend from above. O oh, promised land, let us who have been granted a brief stay here learn from one another what it is to be human in a human and other than human world before the arena is cleared, the court returned to its players. Before each of us is drawn back into the fields of our fearless investigations, let us turn to one another, the diverse, expanding universe in whom we find strength and love of truth, and let us say, Amen. Thank you, Dr. Rick Chess, the Roy Carroll Professor of Honors, Arts, and Sciences, you have inspired us. Thank you. <clears throat> Mary, on behalf of all of us here today and all of those who love and support UNC Asheville, let me say how deeply pleased and enormously proud we are to have you leading our university. Thank you. This concludes today's ceremony. On behalf of the UNC Asheville Board of Trustees, thank you all so very much for being with us for this truly momentous occasion. Please remain in your seats until the platform party has recessed, and then please join us immediately following the recessional on the University Quadrangle for a picnic and music as we continue to celebrate our community, our university, and our new chancellor, Dr. Mary Grant. As you leave the Kimmel Arena today, volunteers will direct you from the building. And as you proceed to the festivities, please follow the trail of blue bulldog prints marked on the sidewalk. 
Thank you very much, and have a great afternoon. Thank you.